Hi there. Now I'm assuming that you're familiar with McLaurin's series or McLaurin's expansion. In the past I've shown you that this particular series can be used to expand say the exponential series e to the power x as a series like this or sin x cos x as series or even the natural log of 1 plus x. But there's a problem with Maclaurin series. It doesn't work for all functions. For instance, suppose you had the function g of x equal the natural log of x. If we were working out g of 0 when x is 0, we would have the natural log of 0, which is undefined. So for Maclaurin series to work, each of these terms here must be defined. There's also another problem with Maclaurin series. It works well when x is close to 0. If, for instance, you are trying to work out the natural log of 2, that is by letting x equal 1, you'd find you'd need thousands of terms here for this to actually give you a value, just say 2 for significant figure accuracy. So there's a bit of a disadvantage then in using Maclaurin series. What we want to come up with is a way of defining a function as a series for values of x close to some particular value of x equaling a, say, where a doesn't equal 0. Now there is a way, and it is known as Taylor's series. What we do is we let f of x plus a replace g of x. In other words, wherever we see an x, we replace the x with x plus a. I'll just write that in for you, okay? i.e. replace any x, okay? We'll just say replace x with x plus a. So what do we generate? Well, instead of g of x, we've got f of x plus a. So we've got f of x plus a okay, equals, now, instead of g of 0, when x is 0, if we let x equal 0 here, then x will be 0 here. And that just gives us f of a. So we've got f of a for that first term. And for the second term, this requires us to differentiate g of x first of all and let x equal 0. Well, if we differentiate g of x, it's going to be the same as differentiating f of x plus a. And if we let x equal 0, we're just going to get f dash of a. So in place of g dash of 0, we're going to have plus f dash of a. A. And this is multiplied by x. So we just put that then as x. When it comes on to this term, by a similar argument, what we get is f double dash of a divided by 2 factorial multiplied by x squared. The next term will be f treble dash of a over 3 factorial multiplied by x cubed. And it goes on like this. The series goes on until we get our general term, which is now f differentiated r times over, where we let x equal a. And we divide this by r factorial and multiply it by x to the power r. And we have other subsequent terms there. And what we've generated here is one version of Taylor's series. In this version, what we do is we generate a series in ascending powers of x for f of x plus a. Now there is another version that we can generate, and we get that, if I just put here or, we get this other version by replacing any x with 
x minus a. So we'll just write this in, replacing x with x minus a. Then if we do that, if I replace x here with x minus a, we get x minus a plus a, which is just simply f of x. So we've got f of x, okay, equals, we've got f of a here. Now for this term here, we're going to have f dash of a, the first differential of f of x then, when we let x equal a. But when we multiply it by x, that x is replaced with x minus a, so we get x minus a here. For this term here, this is going to be plus f double dash of a divided by 2 factorial. And again, instead of being multiplied by x squared, it's now multiplied by all of x minus a squared. This term here would be f treble dash of a all over 3 factorial. And it's now multiplied by x minus a all cubed. And in general then, you've got your term which is going to be f differentiated r times over where x equals a, divide it by r factorial and multiply it by x minus a to the power r. And again, this will carry on for subsequent terms. And this is another version then of Taylor's series where in this version you'll notice that we're expanding f of x as a series in powers of x minus a. Now with these expansions what I have done is I've expanded g of x and I've shown you that I've replaced x with x plus a or with x minus a but in each of these expansions a does not equal 0. But note what happens if a does equal 0. When a equals 0, what we generate is, in fact, Maclaurin series. So we just write that in, that f of x is Maclaurin series. Now, in other videos in this series, I'll show you how we can use these particular expansions for Taylor's series to take functions of x or f of x per se and expand them either as a series in ascending powers of x or in ascending powers of x minus a. So thanks for watching and I hope you found this video useful.